How should one deal with recurring self-pity and why is it so gripping? Well, it can be gripping for a variety of reasons. It can be gripping because you are, let's see, because you are high in neuroticism. That's a possibility. And, uh, and why is it so gripping? Well, that's another potential reason. It's hard for me to say. Um, let's see. I have a another chapter like that. What's it called there? Um, yeah, again, it's rule two. Treat yourself like someone you're responsible for helping. Well, why the hell wouldn't you pity yourself? I mean, people are... Life is tragic. Everything ends in death. Everything that you have will be taken away from you. You're weak and breakable and prone to fits of impulsivity and malevolence. How could you not have self-pity? Well, that's really the answer. But, but the next answer is, yeah, well, despite that, it's not good enough. You have to rise above all that, even though you have every reason for it. That's the thing that's so paradoxical is you have to rise above it, even though you have every reason for it. And part of the reason you have to rise above it is because if you don't, it makes everything worse. You and everything else. And being itself. And so it's gripping because, well, it does grip you, you know. Malevolence and tragedy and vulnerability and, and mortality, they're gripping. And I would say, well, you have to find something that's even more gripping than that. And I would say the, most, the thing that's most gripping, the only thing that's more gripping than that in, true, in truth is to live a good life to live the best life you possibly can, to live a life that's so noble that all of those things are justifiable.